I didn't have a lot of hobbies when I was young. I uh, worked most of the time in high school. I was a DCT program and did electronics work more than anything else, as, as well as construction with my father, who was in the construction business. I had no intentions of joining the service. I mean, there wasn't a whole lot of thought right up until after uh, high school was over. and I didn't see anything else in the immediate future, so I decided I'd go in at that point the Navy. Robert Ingram enlisted in the Navy in 1963. During boot camp, he contracted pneumonia and was sent to the dispensary to recover. While in dispensary, we had an outbreak of spinal meningitis. And uh, I watched the corpsmen there, uh, the way they worked and the intensity of what they were doing. Um, didn't understand it. I never had any idea that I would ever go into the medical field in any way. Uh, my family were basically construction workers and truck drivers and blue collar at best. And I decided at that time that I wanted whatever I was seeing that these guys were doing and went down and changed my MOS to uh, Hospital Corps. Upon completion of training, Ingram was assigned to the 7th Marines. He wanted to get close to the action, so he volunteered for C Company, otherwise known as Suicide Charlie. By the summer of 1965, his unit was in Vietnam. My story is really a story about a team. Um, when I went to Charlie Company, when, and I went there with some negative circumstances, um, I was not at all at home with the situation. Uh, I walked into a company that within a week or so, I felt like I was a, a part, a member of a team. It was the greatest bunch of men I've ever met in my life. I had been in combat for probably seven and a half to eight months at the time this incident occurred. And there were many more incidences since we were really on an outpost out in front of the lines. Uh, Charlie Company was seeing most of the action in that area because of our position. Um, firefights were uh, two to three times a week for about six months of that time. There were quite a few incidences prior to this. We had lost uh, a lot of men from injury and death. We, we suddenly got orders to uh, mount up and, and go heavy, as they call it, to make sure you had more than what you needed for normal circumstances. They had information that there was a reinforced regiment of NVA in this valley. They put five companies at one end of the valley and they put Charlie Company at the other end of the valley. The information he had ended up to be uh, a bit in error. They thought they were going in and, and pushed the enemy into us as, as a killing line, per se. And uh, they were wrong. The NBA were at the other end of the valley. And Charlie Company walked into a three-point ambush. All the hell broke loose, probably in the area of 100 automatic weapons, aimed at two of us to begin with, and about 14 behind us. The other guy was cut down immediately. He turned and, and charged them the way Marines tend to do. I went after him, he was about 15 feet from me. And I was attempting to evaluate him. And I was taking so much fire and he and I shared around and uh, he was very dead. After laying down all the ammunition that he and I had into where I thought the enemy was, left one magazine, grabbed it and took off running on my way. Uh, I got a second wound in the knee. There's not any stopping at that point. Uh, when there's bullets coming all over you, you just keep on doing your thing. Uh, I was trying to get back over that slope and, and I looked over and my uh, platoon commander at that point, Sergeant Ben Savage, was there. So I took off to get him. Got in behind him and he took some more rounds as well as I did. He was dead. 
had numerous gunshot wounds. Grabbed his rifle and ammunition, and threw his rifle over in the bushes, and, and took off. I got toward the center of the, the slope and had a, another man down, and I bent over to evaluate him at that point because I thought I was under somewhat protection from the foliage. A North Vietnamese came up out of a spider trap and hit me in the head. I turned over and, and killed him and went to the Marine that I was working on and he was dead and continued on around the slope. I was pretty emotional and pretty angry. All I really wanted at that point was get out there and take care of my men because I was going to die anyway. Which is probably what kept me alive. I didn't go into shock. I went out there to see what I could do. Although severely wounded multiple times, Ingram remained on the battlefield and resolutely answered his fellow Marines' anguished calls for help. He gave them medical attention and dragged them to safety. His selfless actions saved many lives that fateful day. Let's see, I received the Medal of Honor in 1998. I knew nothing about having been put up for it until 1995. Never felt like I deserved anything. Never do anything about it. Certainly didn't need it personally. Everything that the medal is around involves the people I was with, not the person. It involves the actions we were in, not my action. I would just as soon die as take credit for what happened out there that day. I have the highest respect for the medal and the people who wear it, but to me, uh, it's what my men felt about me that makes the medal worthwhile. Today, I would have to be wearing it for them.